Hello everyone. In this lesson we'll be talking about empirical formulas. An empirical formula, as you can see here, is the smallest whole number mole ratio of a compound. So we can't just compare grams and masses. Uh, you need to get moles as a ratio. For example, hydrogen peroxide, the molecule, looks like this. The molecule is HOOH. That is the structural formula of hydrogen peroxide. But the empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of uh, the atoms. So in the case of hydrogen peroxide, the empirical formula would be HO. So how do we get these? I'm going to talk to you about, show you how to do that now. So what we need to do, if we have grams, we can't take a gram ratio or a mass ratio. We need to get a mole ratio. So that means, oh yeah, we get to go back to what we did back in the day and change grams to moles. So a little bit of conversion factors. So I'm going to take the number off the periodic table, 39.10 grams of potassium. So per one mole of potassium. So I'm going to change each of these, the potassium, the sulfur, and the oxygen, to moles. So I look at my periodic table. For every one mole of sulfur, there is 32.07 grams of sulfur. That is its molar mass. And oxygen. So be sure you write all of these things on your sheet and show your work with units every time. So I'm now going to calculate each of these. And you can follow along with your own calculator. So 44.82 divided by 39.10 is 1.14629 moles of potassium. I just put the dots because I know there's a bunch of numbers there, but I'm just going to use some things for now. Um, it is good to write all the numbers down in this case just to have all of your digits, but it typically works quite well, even if you just use the sig figs that are appropriate. So here I should have four sig figs. So 0 0.5734 more. There's more sig figs, but we're just going to keep it. Or there's more numbers in my calculator. If I do it for oxygen, I get 2.299 and more. That's moles of oxygen. And, well, this is a mole ratio. We can see the mole ratio of everything. Uh, so we could say, hey, the empirical formula is K, 1.146, S, 0.5734, and O, 2.299. Well, that doesn't look very clean. So we need the lowest whole number mole ratio, whole number. So how do we do that? Well. Every time we do it, we're going to divide by the smallest amount of moles. In this case, a 0.5734 is our smallest amount. So that will give me a 1 to 1 ratio. If I do it here, 0.5734, I'm going to get approximately, it's not always perfect, but it's really close to a whole number, a 2 to 1 ratio. And it would be closer if we carried all these numbers out, but we typically don't need to be exact on this. It's close to a whole number. And this is really close to a 4 to 1 ratio. So what's the empirical formula? Well, an empirical formula is the lowest whole number mole ratio of all the atoms present. So K2SO4 is the empirical formula of this compound. Now if I ask, another good question to ask after this would be, well, what's the name of this? And you know that would be potassium sulfate. But this ionic compound, that is the ratio of the atoms in this compound. Let's try another one. All right. This one has carbon and hydrogen and oxygen. So a same process. I have to change all of them to moles. So be sure you are showing your work. Whoops. I'll do the carbon first. For every one mole of carbon, there is 12.01 grams of carbon. And I'm going to do the hydrogen next. And if you ever wonder, just put the put in order of the, the atoms given as far as determining 
the order that you should put the atoms in for your formula. So same process, we're getting the masses from the periodic table to convert grams to moles. All right, I'm going to do a little math here in my calculator. And on the top one, I get 4.0366. So this one go like this. And the next one, I get... Eight point zero four, rounding to a whole number. That there's more numbers there. And then the last one, forty-two point four divided by sixteen gets me two point seven one. So this is moles of carbon. This is moles of hydrogen. This is moles. And there's more numbers. Moles of oxygen. So again, divide by your smallest amount. That gives me not a equivalent, but one to one. If I do the carbon, 4.037 divided by 2.71, I get not close to a whole number. I get 1.5 to one. Whoa, uh oh, what are we gonna do here? Let's do the hydrogen. Remember, we need a lowest whole number mole ratio. Lowest whole number mole ratio. We don't have whole numbers yet. So what we're going to do to get a whole number here is we're going to multiply each of these by 2 because it's the easiest way to get a whole number. So that makes this 3, that makes this 6, that makes this 2. So the empirical formula in this case is C3H6O2. Not in every case, not every formula has a, a atom that there's only one of them. So in this case, we had to multiply by 2 to get everything to a whole number. Sometimes you could have 1.33 to 1. And the only way to get a whole number would be multiplied by 3. You could have, uh, it's possible to have 1.25 to 1. You have to multiply by 4 to get a whole number. In most cases, they're pretty darn close to a whole number, like this one and this one. If it's not, if it's not like 1.98 or 4.01. If it's a 1.5, that's not close to the whole number. That's halfway there. So you need to account for that and multiply everything by 2 in that case. So kind of a unique situation or a unique thing. As far as naming this, this is some sort of a prop compound. Uh, it's tough to tell for sure what it is. It's not an alcohol, but it could be something you wouldn't worry about trying to name this at this point. So C3H6O2 would be the correct empirical formula of this compound. The last one, it looks a little different. And the reason it looks different is because we have percentages instead of grams. You might say, well, what do we do with that? Well, it's not too, not too hard to do here. What you're going to do if you have percentages is just assume you have 100 grams of this compound, of this ethanol. If you have 100 grams of it, guess what? 52.2 grams of it is carbon. And 34.8 grams of it is oxygen, because this is percent by mass. So if you have 100 grams, you can assume 100 grams. You can assume a million grams if you want. You can assume one gram. If you assumed one gram, well, there'd be 0.522 grams of it to be carbon. It doesn't matter what you assume. The ratios are going to come out to be the same. So you can assume anything, but I always just assume 100 grams because I can just change the percentages to grams. And you do the same process. Change it to moles, get the lowest whole number ratio, and figure out your empirical formula from that. So that is what I'd like you to do to complete this sheet, is to figure out the empirical formula for ethanol, showing all of your work for changing it to moles, and then dividing by the lowest amount of moles, and figuring out what that final empirical formula should be for ethanol. Thank you.